What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a pretty powerful gaming PC and for this one I really wanted to choose parts that would be fully compatible with SteamOS 3, the same operating system that comes on the Steam Deck because I will be installing that later on. And in my experience so far, I've just had much better luck with AMD cards. So for this one, we've got an AMD GPU and an Intel CPU. I also wanted to make sure we'd have enough power for high-end emulation, basically anything you want to run on this small form factor gaming PC. This isn't going to be a full build video, I just kind of want to go over the parts as I put it together and then we're going to get right into some testing, but one thing I've been waiting on for a few months is the new Meshroom case from Sunnyside Up. This is from the daughter company of Lee and Lee, and Sunnyside Up has already put out a few. They've got the Meshalicious, but this is the brand new Meshroom, it actually just released to the public a few days ago, and I've got the grey version here, but they do make a few different colors. Now just pulling it out of the box, checking out the build quality, really loving this case here. It supports mini ITX or DTX. We can go with a full size ATX power supply or SFX up to a three slot GPU. You can pick this up with a tempered glass side panel or a full mesh case. This one here happens to have that tempered glass on the side and it supports up to a 280 millimeter radiator. So as you can see, all of the side panels come off and once you get all these off, there's tons of room to build in here. This one here also came with that PCIe 4.0 riser so we can mount that card vertically and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing with the AMD card we're using in this unit. And like I mentioned, this isn't a how-to video, I just kind of wanted to get this built and see how it performed, but I do want to go over the parts I'm using here. When it comes to the motherboard, I opted to use an ASRock Z690 Phantom Gaming, this is the Mini ITX TB4 model, so we do have Thunderbolt 4. I've got a Kingston Fury 2TB NVMe SSD. RAM is also handled by Kingston. It's their new DDR5 Fury line. I've got 32 gigabytes running at 5400 megahertz. And when it comes to the GPU, we're using the new ASRock RX 6750XT. This is the Phantom Gaming version. We have 12 gigabytes of DDR6 VRAM, and we should see some really great performance out of this AMD card. But overall, the build went really smoothly. I'm using a 700 watt SFX power supply, and for the cooler I chose to use, it's the MSI Mag 280. So we've got a 280 millimeter AIO in this unit, and it should keep that i5 nice and chilly. And yeah, once everything's together, this is a very minimalistic case, something that I personally really like. This one is the gray version, they're offering a green version, but unfortunately I didn't see a white version on their website. I was really hoping for one, but uh, you know, I think the gray is probably one of the best colors on the website right now, at least in my opinion. Little bit of RGB with that Mag 280 cooler, this is fully adjustable from the operating system. It's just in the cycle mode right now, and I'm not a huge fan of RGB, but I think a little bit can go a long way. Having it up front here, we've also got the block with that RGB on it. I think it looks really good. So now I want to get into some testing here. I need to set up Windows. I'm actually running Windows 11 Pro. I'm going to run some benchmarks. We're going to test out some PC games and some high-end emulation. All right, so here we are. We've got Windows 11 Pro installed. Up and running here, I've got a bunch of benchmarks, I've got some emulators and some PC games we're going to be testing out. We've got that 12th gen i5 12600K, 10 cores, 16 threads, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 running in dual channel at 5400 megahertz, and the Radeon RX 6750 XT with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Now I haven't done any tweaking whatsoever, the only thing I did was go into the BIOS and set the XMP profile for the RAM so we could run at 5400 MHz. No overclock on the GPU or CPU. And the first thing I wanted to do was jump right into a little bit of gaming. Here we have Spider-Man Remastered, we're at 1440p, very high settings. Now I actually thought we'd get a little better out of this, and with FSR we definitely could but I'm getting an average of 78 FPS out of this, and with that 6750 XT, like I mentioned, I thought it'd be a bit more, but locking this at 60 is a great way to play it, especially at 1440p. And by the way, I'm not complaining at all. This is some really great performance, especially given that this game was just released. Down the road, we'll probably get a bump in performance on basically everything we run this game on. Next thing I wanted to do was take a look at some benchmarks that I ran on this unit. And first up, we've got Geekbench 5 coming in with a single core of 1866, looking really good there, and a multi of 12,826. I also ran Cinebench R23, and the highest multi-core score that I got out of this was 17,851. 
Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark, we have Firestrike coming in with a total score of 29,128. And the final one I ran here was Time Spy. We got a really nice score of 13,697. So yeah, these synthetic benchmarks are looking really good, but I want to see how this thing really performs. So let's get back into some more PC gameplay. Moving over to Cyberpunk 2077, we're at 1440p, high settings with no FSR. Now if I want to go to Ultra, I will have to turn FSR on if you take a look at Afterburner. We're actually getting an average of around 76 FPS out of this game, and FSR is definitely going to help out, but I kind of wanted to stay away from it as much as possible. And to tell you the truth, this has run everything that I've tested with FSR off at 1440p, but I did try it out in the next game just to see what kind of bump we could get out of it. And that one's going to be God of War. And here it is at 1440p, ultra, no FSR. I'm getting an average of around 68 FPS. I mean, really not that bad. But uh, again, with this 6750 XT, I thought we'd get just a bit more out of it. Now, we're definitely not CPU bound here. I've been able to run this much higher on a 3080 Ti, and I completely understand that that's a higher end card, but let's go ahead and just turn FSR to quality. And with it set to quality, 1440p, still at ultra settings, we do get a nice little bump in performance, and you will across the board with FSR. And the final one I tested here, Forza Horizon 5, we're at extreme settings, 1440p. And if you go down to Ultra, it will run this game at 4K on the 6750XT, but I wanted to see what we could do in extreme. And at 4K extreme, I'm getting an average of around 64 FPS. But with those settings, every once in a while, I did notice a drop under 60. So 1440p, extreme settings, we can get well over 100 FPS on average. Now it's time to move over to some high-end emulation, and we're going to start off light here for the system we have. PS2 using PC SX2, 4K, Ratchet and Clank, running at a constant 60. And we've got super safe presets here with PC SX2, looking really good. I didn't think we'd have an issue with PS2 on this system. Moving over to Wii U using the SimU emulator, Vulcan back in, Async shaders, 4K, Bayonetta 2, also tested out Breath of the Wild, you can run that at 4K60 all day on this system. SimU is just a really great emulator, and on a higher end rig like this, you're not going to have any issues with Wii U emulation. Another one that works very well is PS3 emulation using RPCS3. We're at 4K here, Vulcan back in with Skate 3, and we're definitely pulling some wattage from that i5, up to 80 watts with this unit. But this emulator with the harder to run games loves those extra cores and threads, and we've got plenty of them here for this. I've had really good luck with 12th gen Intel and the RPCS3 emulator. But I gotta say, one of the most impressive things that I saw out of this was Xbox 360 emulation using Xenia. So I'm using the Canary version of Xenia. We've got Forza 2 here with no V-Sync, and this thing almost runs at around 200 FPS. Now I haven't been around this track, so there are shaders trying to cache in the background. Notice a few hiccups here and there, but I haven't seen it go under 150 FPS, which is more than enough with a game like this. I mean, definitely turning V-Sync on, it'll run at 60 all day. So we're getting some really great Xbox 360 performance out of this rig, but there was one last game I wanted to test here for the Xenia emulator, and this one's always given me issues in the past, but with the latest updates to the Canary build of Xenia, we can run this over 60 FPS. So this is really awesome. I mean, it's been a long time coming, and on some other higher-end rigs in the past, I've been able to get really close to a constant 60, but if you take a look at Afterburner, you can see that we're right there at 64 FPS, and if you have V-Sync on, this will run at 30. Of course, since we're running it at 60 or over 60, it's going to run it at 30 really well. But it looks great like this, and it's super smooth when you're at 60 FPS. It does make it a whole different experience, and I cannot wait for more updates to come to Xenia. 
So overall, I think the build turned out great. We can run anything at 1440p. We've got awesome 4K emulation on this machine. And going into it, I knew we would with the CPU and GPU combo that I chose for this unit. The new mesh room case is actually pretty easy to build in. It's small form factor and it looks absolutely amazing in this gray variant, but they do have some other colors over on their website. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links to everything I used in this build down below in the description. And I will have at least one more video coming up. I definitely want to install SteamOS 3 on this unit and see what kind of performance we can get out of it. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.